Chapter thirty one of Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Cole. Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book One. Translated by Alexander Roberts and William H. Rombeau. Chapter thirty one Doctrines of the Cainites one Others again declare that Cain derived his being from the power above, and acknowledge that Esau, Korah, the Sodomites, and all such persons are related to themselves. On this account they add, they have been assailed by the Creator, yet no one of them has suffered injury. For Sophia was in the habit of carrying off that which belonged to her from them to herself. They declare that Judas the traitor was thoroughly acquainted with these things, and that he alone, knowing the truth as no others did, accomplished the mystery of the betrayal. By him all things, both earthly and heavenly, were thus thrown into confusion. They produce a fictitious history of this kind, which they style the Gospel of Judas. 2. I have also made a collection of their writings, in which they advocate the abolition of the doings of Hystera. Moreover, they call this Hystera the creator of heaven and earth. They also hold, like Carpocrates, that men cannot be saved until they have gone through all kinds of experience. An angel, they maintain, attends them in every one of their sinful and abominable actions and urges them to venture on audacity and in pollution. Whatever may be the nature of the action, they declare that they do it in the name of the angel, saying, O thou angel, I use thy work. O thy power, I accomplish my operation. And they maintain that this is perfect knowledge, without shrinking to rush into such actions as it is not lawful even to name. 3. It was necessary clearly to prove that, as their very opinions and regulations exhibit them, those who are of the school of Valentinus derive their origin from such mothers, fathers, and ancestors, and also to bring forward their doctrines, with the hope that perchance some of them, exercising repentance and returning to the only Creator, and God the former of the universe, may obtain salvation and that others may not henceforth be drawn away by their wicked, although plausible, persuasions, imagining that they will obtain from them the knowledge of some greater and more sublime mysteries. But let them rather, learning to good effect from us the wicked tenets of these men, look with contempt upon their doctrines, while at the same time they pity those who, still cleaving to these miserable and baseless fables, have reached such a pitch of arrogance as to reckon themselves superior to all others on account of such knowledge, or as it should rather be called ignorance. They have now been fully exposed, and simply to exhibit their sentiments is to obtain a victory over them. 4. Wherefore I have laboured to bring forth, and make clearly manifest, the utterly ill-conditioned carcass of this miserable little fox. For there will not now be need of many words to overcome their system of doctrine, when it has been made manifest to all. It is as when, on a beast hiding itself in a wood, and by rushing forth from it is in the habit of destroying multitudes, one who beats round the wood and thoroughly explores it, so as to compel the animal to break cover, does not strive to capture it, seeing that it is truly a ferocious beast. But those present can then watch and avoid its assaults, and can cast darts at it from all sides, and wound it, and finally slay that destructive brute. So in our case, since we have brought their hidden mysteries, which they keep in silence among themselves to the light, it will not now be necessary to use many words in destroying their system of opinions. For it is now in thy power, 
and in the power of all thy associates, to familiarize yourselves with what has been said, to overthrow their wicked and undigested doctrines, and to set forth doctrines agreeable to the truth. Since then the case is so, I shall, according to promise, and as my ability serves, labor to overthrow them, by refuting them all in the following book. Even to give an account of them is a tedious affair, as thou seest, but I shall furnish means for overthrowing them, by meeting all their opinions in the order in which they have been described, that I may not only expose the wild beast to view, but may inflict wounds upon it from every side. End of Book 1, Chapter 31 Recording by David Cole, Medway, Massachusetts